Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. So you may have seen Tim Pool post a tweet uh, with, curiously enough, I'm not sure of his motivations there, but he did not link to this article. He just posted a screenshot of the headline of this article, which is on TimCast.com, which is his website. So it's like he's trying so, to distance himself from it and like, so that the people on Twitter won't know that he paid this person to write it. So there's a, there's a couple of things here. If I were, if I were to steal man very, very quickly, um, the Twitter algorithm actually de-promotes any tweet that has a link in it. Mm, yeah. So okay. it could very well be that this is just him doing that. There's a reason, like, whenever I post on Twitter, there's an image, and then under that, yeah. there's a tweet afterwards. But, I mean, he also cropped the big word Timcast off of the he left did. there. So he did. Like, he very spent... His, his like, crop job is on him. That was, that was me very, very specifically trying to steal man knowing that it's it's tim acting in good faith is very outside of his purview yeah so i'm actually i i have no interest in actually reading tim's article i did not read tim's article what i did do was i went and read the paper that he's saying so people with narcissistic psychopathic tendencies are more likely to support left-leaning views new research finds so first and foremost the study that found this is pre-registered so it's, it's on a preprint server. It has not been peer reviewed. It's just some guys did a survey and have now wrote, written a paper about the survey and no one else has like given it the okay. This is good for publishing. There's no peer review. There no. is no peer review on it. So like now preprint, preprint is a good thing. I like people should register their studies for preprint because that helps fight p hacking because if you register your study saying this is how i'm going to do it if you then don't do it that way it that's a huge red flag and that that's a big problem in science so pre-registering studies before you do them is a good thing i am not shitting on that practice however you don't like except in like very cutting edge kind of like all the research is still brand new sort of thing you don't want to be referencing something that hasn't past peer review yet and if you do reference it you want to like make a note of like hey uh, this thing that i'm referencing is a preprint so like take it with a grain of salt but like this is what they have allegedly found sort of thing but here's um, the thing i guarantee you that most people like most people who have not ever had to assemble a bibliography right they don't know what preprint means they have no idea what that word means they've probably never heard that yeah. Even if they have assembled a bibliography, they've probably never heard that. Yeah. Most layman people who aren't used to having to, like, do meticulous research, cite what they're saying in the middle of an argument, that's just not a my, thing that they're used to. So my my partner is uh, studying to be a psychologist. No, not a psychologist. Psych psychotherapist. Um, mm. she's, she's doing her master's in psychology. Um, so, yeah, I guess that would be a type of psychologist. <laughs> I don't know the terms. <laughs> um, You're anyway. doing your best. It's fine. Yeah. Actually, it's it, like her, um, she she has me proofread all her papers and stuff before she submits them. And th that's actually like been really helpful for me and like understanding how certain things are done and being able to figure stuff out for myself. And it, like it's great. I love it. Um, but like she's doing her master's in psychology and she did not when we first started dating, she did not know what P hacking was, which if you're not familiar, P hacking is basically there's there's the P value represents what are the odds that the null hypothesis is true? And the null hypothesis just be being like, if I am hypothesizing something like all boys drive blue cars, that's my mm -hmm. hypothesis. The null hypothesis would be not all boys drive blue cars or boys don't all drive blue cars or some, something along those lines. Like it, just the opposite of the hypothesis, basically. And mm -hmm. uh, so the p-value, it, it's generally considered statistically significant when your p-value is under 0 0.0 is it 0 0.05 or 0 0.005 it would be point, i think yeah, it's, it's 0 0.05 0 0.05 it's 0 yeah. 0.05 because what that means is that there's a 95 percent chance that whatever effect you saw is due to your hypo or due to something other than the null hypothesis you can't even say it's due to your hypothesis usually it's just yeah. it's not the null hypothesis there is actually something there this is the same reason why when we're doing studies on things like vaccines um, when people are like, hey, look, uh, the COVID vaccine caused these problems, but it, it's present in, you know, 0.0001% of the population. That's where the term this is not statistically significant comes from. 
Yeah, so Donald Bodiger, or Botger, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, says uh, p-value is there's no there there. That's, that's essentially it. Um, yeah, so, uh, but there are lots of ways you can manipulate the p-value after the fact. So like if you collect your data and then find that you're not, like if you, if you change your methodology partway through the study, that basically says that you are looking for positive results. You are fishing through the data that you have already collected and are now trying to find something significant because just it's just the nature that, of statistics. If it's 95% likely that it was your hypothesis and not the p-value, that means there's a 5% chance that it's just the it's just the null hypothesis. And since that is a thing, like 5% chance is not zero, there are going to be things that come up with a p-value of 0 0.05 that are just the null hypothesis was and it's just noise in the data. So P hacking is when you take advantage of that and like manipulate things after the fact. And a lot of times it's done unintentionally. It's accidental. It's also done intentionally sometimes, but like this is why pre-registering is a good idea because that you, that prevents P hacking. But anyway, um, their conclusions at best can be treated as tentative. Maybe this is true if it passes peer review. And even if it passes peer review, this is just one study. That doesn't it's not conclusive at this point peer, peer review doesn't necessarily mean that the results you have are repeatable or mm -hmm. uh, replicatable rather yeah so at best this means we need more research on this topic uh my second point here is they did not look at whether narcissists and psychopaths are more likely to be left-wing or right-wing they only looked at whether people with greater left-wing authoritarian tendencies are also more likely to have narcissistic or psychopathic psychopathic tendencies so wait, this... isn't that working backwards? That, that's that's working backwards. You're looking at you're looking at the person you don't like I, and then working okay, backwards so this is, from there. I might have rephrased this incorrectly. Now um they do say some stuff in there that makes me think they are working backwards, but this this might just be me poorly rephrasing something here, so don't put too much stock into that. Fair enough. Um but what 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 uh Tim's writer here, uh Adrian, Adrian Norman. Uh, so people that are narcissistic and psychopathic ten with like narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies are more likely to support left wing views. That is not what the research found. What the research found is that people that are already on the left that have narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies will also tend to have a greater degree of left wing authoritarianism, which was a very specific thing that they defined in their uh, in their paper. Um, and there, there were several metrics. That's that they also were at. a very different scenario than people who are on the left tend to support authoritarianism yeah. or so tend to be neurotic. Of, so one of the things they actually said in the paper. OK, now, OK, let, let's back it up a little bit. Get away from the paper for a sec. I just want to put that like we shouldn't be stigmatizing people that have narcissistic personality disorder or, or uh, antisocial personality disorder. Um there are plenty of them out there that live full, happy, productive lives and are not running around murdering people or manipulating everybody to their own ends or whatever. Um, I should, I should probably also clarify real quick. Antisocial personality disorder is the DSM-5 classification for what used to be psychopathy and sociopathy. Yes, they've been combined. Yes. Because I, I was struggling to figure out the difference back when I was doing my David Wood videos. And oh, the guy who was like, hey, back when I was not a Christian, I had a ball peen hammer. Yes. And then I that guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember that guy. Because I, I I pegged him as a sociopath um, before I found out that he just flat out says, yes, I'm a sociopath. I'm like, OK, I probably would have spent less time harping on that if I yeah. known that that was just a diagnosis you had. <laughs> Well, it's it's at least interesting to know that those you are, pegged him. I hope you had a good time. Yes. Um, well, th that's actually a, a good example of those are videos of mine that are still up that my views have changed since then. I would not run around making fun of someone for being a sociopath at this point because I have learned since then. Um, so you can go and watch me be an asshole and I will be embarrassed at you watching that. But it's in the record that I changed my views. So that's that's yeah, fair enough. Point. It's learning. So, yeah. So anyway, so the study was only looking at people that are already leaning left and seeing if there is a correlation between how far you lean left and whether or not you have narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies. Um, but on top of that, so like right there, like right off the bat there, it's like, okay, well, obviously people with these tendencies where they're more likely to be manipulating people for their own ends and they don't have the same level of empathy um, as most people like 
if they're if they are malicious with their psychopathy or narcissism, yeah, they're going to gravitate towards authoritarianism. And they again, they pointed out in the paper the same is true of right wing authoritarianism. The people on the right yeah. that have more narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies also gravitate more towards the authoritarianism version of being on the right. So what it comes down to is people with narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies tend to lean towards authoritarianism and will use whichever side of the political spectrum is expedient for them at the time. It's a it, it's a very cruel pragmatism, basically, because mm -hmm. like it's a because, I mean, if, you, if you've got one of those personality disorders, generally all it means is that your mirror neurons do not function the way that a neurotypical person's mirror neurons function. That's the thing that allows you to put yourself in someone else's shoes, per yeah. se. Like, when, when we're saying that as a, as a turn of phrase, that's literally what your brain is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anywho. But, but it gets better, sirs. It gets better. Oh, dear. So, yeah. So, right here, in two registered... Uh, pre-registered studies. So there's two studies, one they looked at narcissism, one they looked at psychopathy, and they found basically the same thing. Um, so there's two authors here, Anne Crispins and Alex Bertrams. Um, and I was curious, like, are, are these guys, like, obviously affiliated with, like, right-wing organizations or something? Like do, like, do they work for Turning Points USA? And they just moonlight as scientists or whatever? Um, no, they don't. They are legitimate scientists. Um Mm -hmm. Anna Crispins usually publishes stuff along the lines of, um, oh, what does she get? Uh, she does uh, test anxiety. Um, like studying whether or not like things that impact test anxiety, um, how test anxiety plays out in people with different mental illnesses, stuff like that. That's usually her area of expertise. And... Uh, Alex Bertrams usually publishes papers based uh, about ego depletion and how it relates to sports, um, which I, I read a couple of the papers and I could get into the ego depletion thing, but I'm not going to because it's not really relevant. Um, mm. Just my point is now this this is not again, it is not unheard of for author for scientists to like that. You don't have to spend your entire life studying one thing exactly, um, but it is kind of suspect that when you do st like all of your papers are this one thing exactly. And then there's this other one that's completely different from it. But what, what's most interesting here, I decided to uh, see how often do they publish together? Cause they work at the same university. They publish papers together sometimes. And yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they do, there's a, there's a few, and usually the ones that they're publishing together are not related to either of their fields. Um, however, they are, are also, they have seven papers that they publish together. Um, three of those papers, they're like down the list of like 15 authors somewhere. And they're like in the middle, they're not the primary author. They're just like, this was research that their university was doing and, um, they were involved in it basically. Mm. Um, in there were their pro proximity being what it is. I, I might've had that number wrong with is, is there, like, there's a small number of papers where they they're just involved tangentially basically like they're they're authors of the study but they're like not primary um there are five papers that they have offered authored together with no other authors um and these five papers are let's see if you can figure out a pattern here one looks at the tendency of uh or the the correlation between narcissistic narcissistic traits and feminist activism one looks at the correlation between narcissistic traits and anti-sexual assault activism uh, one um, looks at the correlation of narcissistic traits and lgbq activism they left the t out of that uh, one which seems kind of suspicious i'm starting to get some bad vibes and here. then the and then the fifth one was uh, the, the fifth one is the one that um find the one that doesn't belong um they 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 looked at like what it, what factors impact um, the behavior of eating meat and like people reducing okay, so their eating vegan meat. veganism there would be the aim. But so here, here's the thing though. Um, the correlation of the intentions to reduce to eat meat thing that, uh, so that one, I think what they were going to, so all of these have a very obvious, like right wing bias where they're they're They seem to be trying to get people to like come to certain conclusions 
with them. Um, the reducing yeah. meat consumption thing, uh, that one was interesting because uh, like, I think what they were going for there is like they, they compared um, the consumer's intention to what the consumer, like the perceived beha behavioral modifications. So things like meat is cheaper than vegetables or something like that, like external factors that would cause someone to reduce their meat consumption versus I just want to reduce my meat consumption. And their conclusion was basically like, well, the external factors don't matter. So what I think they were kind of aiming for there is like, oh, those left wing hippies are trying to get us to go vegan. So we're going to say that like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what incentives you put on uh, not eating meat. It's the consumer's intention that matters. Never mind that, you know, the consumer's intention can be modified with incentives yeah it's like what if what happens when you have a, a two identical steaks but one was grown in a lab and it cost half which one do you think is going to be bought nine room. times out of ten the one grown in the lab that cost half is probably eventually so going to reach a point jess is asking what university is this they're affiliated with the university of Bern in uh, switzerland so yeah they're not even american which is weird <laughs> Let's go ahead and outsource our study just so we can get, you know, yeah, we can get the results we want. So um, now I looked at so all their studies. So they've got five studies that they've published together. Four of them are preprints, not peer reviewed. What? what? Four out of Hold five on. of them are preprints. And let me guess the 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 vegan the uh, the meat eating one is the one that actually has some, yes. some look into it yes but but it that's gets, fucking funny sirus it gets better okay <laughs> it gets better so um oh i wrote it down okay so the uh, the meat paper is published in the journal sustainability which when i googled it to see because normally when a journal has like their title is just like one word that means that they got to that one first and they're the old journal that it like it has yeah kind of like nature so, yeah it's it's the good one right um so i googled it expecting to find out that sustainability is the good journal on like sustainable practices and crap like that um but what i found was that it was one of the original 13 journals to be included in the official norwegian list of possibly predatory journals and um, then in 2022, the Norwegian National Publication Committee and Finnish Publication Forum determined that it is not an academic journal and removed it from the register of approved journals. Why? <laughs> so these are the these are the people that Tim Pool is using to. Yes. Is, is looking at yes. the site. So the, and this is how you got on your rabbit hole then, because you found this and went, hold on. This seems kind of fishy. I wonder what else there might be. Yes, exactly. But Cirrus, it gets better. Oh, God. So like, you've been fun. You've been, okay. Get, so for people in chat, people in chat who don't realize this, Rhino has been like a small child in my DMs today. <laughs> oh my God, I can't wait to show you. Then I'm like, okay, cool. Then can you send something to me beforehand? No, I want your reaction live. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> so, um, well, someone ages ago in my chat, uh, I think it was Progress Only. Um, used like they they got auto corrected to duck instead of fuck, and they've all been they're talking about ducking this and ducking that all in my <laughs> chat. It's just become a thing now. Um, yeah, still more effective peer review than the Answers Research Journal. <laughs> Ay -oy -oy. And then Tim's audience won't check any of this. No, of course they won't. In it, in every in every situation where you're looking at the Answers Research Journal, you could just be looking at Biologos. Yeah. And it would be better. So anyway, so I feel like, so I, d I didn't read all of the papers like this. This was the only paper that I actually dug into, but like I read the abstracts of the other ones um, yeah. and a little bit further in a couple of them. And um, one of the things I noticed is they seem to be writing things in a way that um, make, th make their statements very easy to cherry pick incorrect conclusions. So like, the uh, the this the study that said that narcissism is a predictor of anti-sexual assault uh, assault activism. Um, so the, there was a there was a sentence in there that like it says the results of multiple regression analysis show that higher narcissistic traits predicted an individual's higher involvement in anti-sexual assault activism over and above the covi uh, covariates. That's that's a full sentence, complete sentence, full stop. Next sentence. 
However, this relationship was evident only for women in the sample. It's like, no, if it's evident only for women, you don't say that it, uh, it showed higher narcissistic traits uh, predicted in an individual's higher involvement in anti-sexual assault activism. You say... You would uh, say in, in, an, in a woman's likelihood yeah. for this, so the not way, an individual. The way I wrote this down when I was describing it was uh, it was their paper that concludes that narcissism is a predictor of anti-sexual assault activism in women. That's how you say that. As so, opposed to what they actually freaking but they, did. But they, but they said, like, oh, it's it's uh, it's it's predictive in individuals. Indivi by individuals, we mean just women. Like we're we're excluding half of the population from individuals. <laughs> this is what happens when you take freaking the the practices that you would use for clickbaiting, and you bring them into a study as the way you're trying to do things. That's now what well, so another very bad. Another thing that I noticed is that a lot of the titles of the studies were worded in such a way as to imply that the people they were looking at had been officially diagnosed with either narcissism or antisocial personality disorder. Um, but when you actually read the study, it's just like a, a general population cross section and they also asked the you know um what's it what's it called it's the um the five factor narcissism inventory they they included that uh serve as part of the survey so like if you score higher on that then like you're not you're not officially diagnosed with narcissism if you score high on that but like it's something like it's it's a test that will probably be a part of that diagnosis but yeah like, so like they they uh they title their things in a way that makes you think that we're talking about people that have been diagnosed with these things, but um, it's actually just we gave them those questions for the survey and the ones that scored higher. We just called narcissists. So wait, wait, hold on. So these people weren't even actually diagnosed with these behavioral disorders. They're just no, guessing just, they have. Them. It's just a cross sectional survey of the general population. That's, but then it's just this. OK, so this moves from clickbait because my initial thought was, OK, this is. This is clickbait being utilized in a way that makes it seem like it is, you know, as opposed to hyperbole. And then there's some context. We have it looking like it's a study. Instead of that, no, it's just a lie. Yeah. Now it's just a lie because now it's not a study that is measuring people that have these neurological conditions that we tried to contextualize in the beginning of this episode. Well, okay, to be fair, the exact study that tim pool was referencing is it, it is not quite worded that way so it's, uh, relations to dark personality traits which is something that they reference a lot um which that kind of like i don't know i I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about the whole like we need to revamp our language to like stop making dark bad and light good because it's racist and like i can see like yeah whatever like, i i just i i disagree with that one because it's not I don't think it's. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily racist. No, it's not necessarily. But like, and I don't. I don't know. But like, um, like the humans number of fear. Okay, humans but, fear the dark because of the unknown, not because they think yes. black people are in it. I know. I know. But the the number of times <laughs> I have read like dark personalities in these papers is just like ugh, that. Like I know. I know it's not. But that sounds like you're relating it to race. <laughs> I can I can understand that I can understand that because when you because when you're reading it and you know it's from a group of people that like to do the 1350 meme, you yes, yeah, so, uh, polydactyl black cat says dark and light as in sheer color spectrum is not racist yet. I'm I'm not saying that it is, and I'm not like like I said, I'm on the fence with that. I think there are some aspects of our language that like yeah, absolutely, I'm fine changing it, but like some of it just doesn't really matter. Um, but like how many times I read that today, I I just. Fennec in my chat asked what uh, the what meme, the 1350 meme. So the, the statement is, despite making up 13% of the population, what group of people are responsible for over 50% of the violent crimes? It's a... Oh, it yeah. Is, so it's the ones that they... that Whose narcissistic traits did not correlate with... See, that that's... Okay, so the sexual assault activism thing, um, that's one that, like... I almost feel like there, there might be... Um, something like like if the if the people know that the survey is with regards to sexual assault mm -hmm. um that could impact how they're ac answering the narcissism questions since it's not 
separated they, firmly. So like if, if they know they it's about sexual walk assault, into that. they're assuming that like all these questions are in the context of dealing with someone with, who has sexually assaulted someone. And yeah. in that case, like I could absolutely see women who are inordinately more likely to be the victims of sexual assault um, being less empathetic towards the aggressors in a sexual assault situation. Like, I, I didn't see anything where they attempted to uh, to correct for that sort of thing. So I could definitely see that. Yeah, no, that would make sense. I'm now thinking of that's... dark clouds because it just got gloomy. The weather is racist now. Um, so my, you kind of pre-prime my, yourself. My son once drew a uh, black rainbow. Um, it just looked like a dick. Because he had the clouds and everything were black. And it was, so it was like the balls on one end and the head on the other end. It was just a, it was just a big black dick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so yeah, so these were all these were all surveys, which again, nothing wrong with surveys. But when you're trying to find out whether or not there's a correlation between narcissism and left left wing authoritarianism, that's the kind of thing where you would want to study specifically people that have been diagnosed with like narcissism or antisocial personality disorder or uh, whatever like that. Like that's not the kind of thing that you do by a cross-sectional survey. That's something that you would do with people that have the diagnosis. Like, Oh, you have these things that we're looking at. What are your political views? And um, even if you want to see how it relates to, specifically left wing, you, you like, as you're doing that, you can just exclude the people that fall right on the, on the spectrum. Basically make it as, as neutral a survey as possible and then select the data you need. Blade Runner says, I like black dick and I can't deny you. Er, no, I like Wait. black dick and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny when a guy walks in with a really big dick and I don't know. What? <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm not good at freestyling. I'm um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the want to distance myself from you just increased a little bit. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> Um, there was a, there was another thing in my chat, uh, where somebody said they might as well be spraying 1844. Is it 1488? 1488. 1488 is the, the 14 words and then 88 for Heil Hitler. Mm. The, there's a lot of fun little and fun. I'm, I'm using fun very loosely here. Uh, fun little, Hey, I use these numbers so that I can mask what I am. So if somebody puts like 1611, it means they're a KJV only, only and a Christian fundamentalist. Um, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. It's agitating to keep track of all of this crap. Yeah. And so what, what's even, so my favorite part about all this is that if like reading through the abstracts and this paper in particular, um, they don't even conclude the things that the right wing pundits want them to conclude. They just like make it easy to draw that conclusion from the way they write. Um, so like after reading through it, uh, they found that left-wing author authoritarianism was statistically significantly predicted by the FFNI. That's the five factor narcissism inventory, um, by the FFNI score for vulnerable narcissism. Like that's a specific type of narcissism, but as soon as they controlled for various factors like age and gender, the FFNI ceased to be predictive for any aspect of left-wing authoritarianism. Uh, that's interesting. So, like, as soon as they control for extraneous variables, the effect goes away. But that's not what the right wing pundits are saying, because they're not. No, they're reading, going to say that like they're not reading down. Like they're not. Uh, oh, control F F N I F F N I. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see how far down is that? Uh, Pre-registered analysis, secondary analysis. Wait, was it? Yeah, here we go. Um, in all of these regression analyses, the respective LWA, that's left-wing authoritarianism, score was st statistically significantly predicted by the FFNI score for vulnerable narcissism. Um, however, this FFNI score was no longer predictive for any of the respected LWA scores when we controlled for age, gender, self-descriptive enhancement, sorry, self-deceptive enhancement, and impression management. So, like... This is in the methods section. Nobody reads the methods section of a study. That's like most people, they, they will read the abstract. And if they go any further than that, they might go to the discussion section if there is one. 
Or the conclusion section. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so... Yeah, no, the, the study does not say what the people are saying that it says. They just... But, but the study authors clearly want people to draw that conclusion. So they wrote it in such a way as to, to lend themselves to misquoting and quoting out of context and stuff like that. And they have a history of writing studies specifically for that purpose. Like, at first I thought, like, maybe I'm being a little too hard. Like, maybe I'm going too hard on the, like, oh, this study came from these authors, therefore it's unreliable thing. It's like, no, when you look at the what they do together, the only thing that they do together is write studies whose headlines can be used for right-wing pundits and don't get published in anything reputable. That's... That's really frustrating because you you don't want to be the person that is constantly saying that because then somebody's going to hit you with like, hey, you're doing the genetic fallacy. You're saying the yeah. source is this, so therefore it's wrong. Then you're like, no, you don't understand. The only times they do this is when there is a goal. And even in and even in these studies that they do, apparently they have no intention of actually publishing. They just register the preprint they, they just write it and go and and let the let the headlines do what they will um they still don't even find what the people say they find they just have to write everything in such a way that the in the conclusions they're trying to reach are front loaded yeah so anyway that was that was my afternoon was reading their papers and diving into their publication history and Oh God, I got I got so deep into stuff that I didn't even bring up because it's it's irrelevant. But I like I want to know like you know like is is ego depletion related to this at all? So I'm like, what is ego depletion? And looking into that, I'm like, oh, ego depletion is like a real thing that like happens to me. So like that's that's that thing where like if you exert a lot of self control, you run out of it eventually. And if if you're in situations that require self control for too long eventually you will lose that self-control and just give in you mean that thing that happens with catholic priests oh god i didn't even I, think of that why'd you got why'd you have to bring I'm, the mood down sirs i we just sorry, we were just having but... a good time talking about how psychopaths are all left-wing authoritarians <laughs> Look, you asked me to exert self-control for a long period of time, Rhino. It only makes sense that eventually I would lose it. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the, <laughs> that's the thing that confuses me, though, is because that like the the self-control thing that's uh, that's Alex Bertram's that does those ones, um, and he seems to come very much out on the side of like, no, self-control is finite. You do lose it eventually, and like when when he's questioned that he like gets angry about it and like writes scathing replies to people that like question his work on it. And it was like, that seems kind of social justicey for a guy writing papers like this on the other, like on his off time. <laughs> so it makes you wonder, and this is the, this is where I get tinfoil Hattie. It, it makes you wonder if money has exchanged hands at any point for the purpose of getting these through. Cause if the, if the papers aren't being written, to go through the peer review process to get uh to get cited or not get cited uh, to not have people look through and try to replicate the results of the studies then for what purpose and my my again maybe this is just me being very very jaded probably incredibly jaded my brain immediately goes to okay who's paying you and maybe that's not fair Maybe that's not a fair place for it to go, but well, here's the thing: where it goes, if it stays as a preprint, then it's not technically misconduct to not report who's paying you. I did not know that. Well, I, I okay, I don't know that either. I'm just assuming <laughs> because, like, that's one of those things where, like, if it gets published, then you have to declare your financial. Like yeah. potential conflicts Your financial of interest. backers. And like, yeah, you you should I I feel like that's one of those things that's like best practices in the preprint. But like if you don't do it, that's just something that like you're gonna get feedback on later. Well, don't worry. We don't have to report that, you know, uh an entire private school was funded by you know, one person who wanted you to come to certain conclusions. Uh we also like, don't have to report all the golf trips that you took repeatedly. Oh and God. I'm just no, saying that okay. I'm going to get another beer. Hold... I'm going to get another beer. You shut up. 
<laughs> Look, I'm just saying maybe we should hold people who write studies to the same standards that apparently we don't hold Supreme Court justices to. <laughs>